Hello, my name is Jordan Schutz and I work at MuleSoft as a developer advocate. In today's tutorial, we're going to be going over how to get started using the Data Weave language. And for many developers out there, this may be your very first experience using Data Weave or even hearing about Data Weave. But luckily for you, it's very easy to pick up and learn since it follows many of the same rules as other functional programming languages. So essentially, Data Weave is broken up into a few different parts. So the whole point of Data Weave is to basically take one piece of data, also known as a payload, and essentially grab that data, do some modifications to it and some transformations, and then output that data in the format that, that you would like. So what's important to know about Data Weave scripts is that it's actually, they're divided into two main sections. The header, which is located above the three dashes, and the body, which is located under the three dashes. And the body essentially contains an expression that will always return an output. So in this case, we're saying payload.message, we're looking at the index message, and then we're outputting whatever value is found under that index. And the header, which defines directives that can actually apply to the body. So with that in mind, let's look at a few examples of how we could use Data Weave to do different sorts of data transformations. So in this case, we're going to change the payload to first name Max, last name Mule, and then we're going to define the company as MuleSaw. And we're going to create a new data weave script. So in this case, it's payload.company. And then we're actually going to concatenate a string, which we've defined as a variable here. So to create a new variable in data weave in the header section, we say var, then we say the, the variable name, which in this case is test, and then we can add a string. And so as you can see in the output, it's concatenating the, the company along with the message here. So it says MuleSoft is awesome. So let's look at another example. So in this case, we can actually create a variable that's a local variable. So the variable that we saw in the last example, this is considered a global variable, but this one right here is a local variable and it's only can be found in the body scope. So we're saying using test equals awesome and then we're concatenating that variable here. Next, let's go over how to create our very first function in Data Weave. So I've copy and pasted a function here, and we actually define the function as fun, and then we define the function name, and then we can actually pass an argument through that function. So we can also create an if statement. So if the argument is equal to the string MuleSoft, basically print out the output and say match, and if it's not, print no match. And so we actually are calling this function here and we're passing payload.company. So we're passing that the company is MuleSoft. And once we do that, then we'll get the output to be match. Next, let's take a look at scoping in Data Weave. So as you can see, we've changed the payload here and we've actually added an email field to the initial data. So when that data gets submitted and the Data Weave script runs, we've actually created a function with the do command, which essentially allows you to add a header and a body to whatever contents are inside the do statement. And so in this case, we've added a variable F name, a variable L name, and a variable email along with this variable as well. However, we are not going to be able to access any of these variables from the actual body of the main data weave script since all of these variables are inside of this function and they don't leave um, the scope. So essentially what we're defining is anything that's in the argument, we're gonna store as like first name and last name and email, and all that data is coming from this payload since all that data is defined here. And so then we have an if statement in the body which will be returned to the function here which says if the email is admin is equal to true, so if the email contains anything that says mulesoft.com, return the final output with this user works at mulesoft, but if they do not work at MuleSoft, return that. So if we go and we change the email, let's say to google.com, you'll notice that the output now changes to does not work at MuleSoft. So now that I've talked a little bit about scoping and you have a little bit of a better understanding of how functions and scopes work, let's move on to the next subject. So let's take a look at another command in Data Weave called match. And in this case, we're going to use the same payload. However, we're going to pass payload.company into this function. And so what we're saying is whatever the argument is that we pass through the function, let's check to see if that string that we've 
sent the function is equal to MuleSoft. And if it is equal to MuleSoft, let's make the output equal to match, which is why you see the output listed here. But if the payload that we submit is not equal to MuleSoft, let's just return the payload as the output. So you'll see that if I actually delete dot company at the end of that payload, you'll see that we're actually return the entire payload statement. So this is just an example of how you can use match to basically modify the output in whatever way you wish. So lastly, I wanna talk about something that we addressed earlier in the video, which is output types. So there's gonna be many cases where you're building an integration that you need to take some JSON and convert it into XML, or you need to take XML and convert it into plain text. And what's great about DataWeave is we allow you to do these transformations incredibly easily. So all it actually requires is you to go up to the header and change the output type to whatever you wish. So in this case, we're gonna actually change it to text plain. So when the, the end system receives this, they're gonna receive it as a plain text format. And so we've defined it as payload.firstName, so it's sending the first name as max. However, if we change that back to application JSON, you'll notice that the output is in quotes. So that's just a great example of how you can change output types, and it's really easy to do in DataWeave. So that's the end of this video. Make sure to visit our website, developer.mulesoft.com, for more awesome tutorials. And if you want to reach out to us or have any comments on this video, please reach out to us at MuleDev on Twitter. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great one. See you soon.